Welcome to Midday Live on TV3, also live on DSTV Channel 279. My name is Grace Hamwa Asari. Coming up this afternoon, Director of Echo Inhales Orphanage indicted in latest announced investigative piece for allegedly maltreating children at the home. Also, two editors of ModernGhana.com still missing after national security operatives ransacked their offices on the international front, Tunisia's capital, Tunis, hit by twin suicide bomb. We have details of these stories and more coming up shortly. Now, let's take our first story where the University of Ghana saddled with a debt of more than 259 million Ghana cities due to what the Auditor General describes as absence of financial borrowing strategy. This is just one of the many damning findings made by the Auditor General's department in its 2018 report. The following news desk reports catalogs key aspects of that report on the university. The report says at the end of 2017, the university owed a total amount of almost 260 million Ghana cities in respect of loans and bonds. It says the university does not have a borrowing strategy which would outline roles and responsibilities in the arrangements of borrowing, determination of borrowing needs and clear mechanisms of servicing loans. Again, the anticipation of budget deficits to warrant financial borrowing are not shown, according to the report. One of the major financial issues raised by the report also relates to avoidable judgment debts. It highlights the fact that, as a tertiary institution, the university refused to meet a rightful request for supplementary payment of first gratia benefits of 1,512,191.13 Ghana cities of the staff who retired in 2010 and 2011. This eventually led to an award of judgment debt of more than 4 million cities by an Accra High Court. Management explained that the investor took the decision to protect the dwindling revenue at the time and to ensure money was available for academic work. In another instance of avoidable judgment debt, the High Court and the Appeals Court ruled in favor of one William Jackson Etundi and awarded a judgment debt of 288,488 US dollars with an additional cost of 15,000 Ghana cities for wrongful demolition of his property by the university. The 2018 report by the Auditor General also talks about some procurement challenges at the Legon Hospital. It states that the hospital does not have its own procurement unit and does not liaise with the university's central procurement unit. The Auditor General recommends that management should establish a procurement coordinating unit at the hospital with clear policies and procedures. Now, in our sanitation campaign dubbed hashtag garbage out this afternoon, we focus on the Alajo drain near Circle. The effort is to reawaken the general public and duty bearers alike to make Ghana clean again. Adwa Adubia Ousu has more. Lack of clean drinking water and proper sanitation systems continue to be a major public health concern in Ghana, contributing to about 70% of diseases in the country. Right here at Alajo in Accra, you can see right behind me refuse dumped at the edges of the drainage system here. We have cattle grazing over there, but some people even burning refuse that is brought here. This also causes air pollution in the system. The sad part of the situation is that there are food vendors here selling to people out there. This is a major health concern for people. I currently have with me someone who actually owns this place to talk to me about the situation here, whether it's actually a bother to him or not. We wash cars, all types of vehicles here. But our main problem is the sanitation. At times we come here, including my boys, we gather all the garbage here, burn them. The following morning when we come, they throw everything back. So at least it's bothering us. We have tried our best 
to control the situation. But it means uh, uh, we have done our best, but uh, we are trying to control the, the, the situation, but the, the problem is too much. So I'm appealing to uh, opinion leaders around this area. If they can help us service the situation, we will appreciate them. We also have um, a man here known uh, as one Justice Frimpong. He says that, uh, Justice Asamoah, he says that he comes here often to actually buy food from the food vendors here. He's going to share his experience with me. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm fine. Um, how often do you come here? Oh, we used to come and wash our car at uh, this thing, Tony Danny car wash. And then we have a job base. We have different uh, uh, kind of foods here. People who are polluting uh, refuse here. Recently, we saw machine digging inside uh, this thing or donor. But before you realize, you know, people are bringing refuse from house to come and then pour. And then whenever you talk to it, the, the, some people are using to bring cutlasses or sticks to come and then challenge you that eh, the land is not for you. The gutter too is not for you. And he's doing bad. But we are doing the sanitation. If they do the sanitation before you realize they, they bring the, this thing, the refuse to here. And it's worrying us. When you come here to buy food, are you not concerned that uh, you may be affected? You may fall sick? I know it will affect me because even people too are uh, railing uh, cows beside it, uh, this thing uh, or, 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 or here. So sometimes if I come here, I don't want to Buy food here. Until a long-lasting remedy is secured for present and future generations, we will continue to battle with this situation, which in the end will affect future generation. Ajua Adbia Ousu, TV3, Alajo. So you can also be a part of the Media General Sanitation Campaign by sending us pictures and videos of the sanitation situation in your community or neighborhood by using the hashtag garbage out. Away from that, the first phase of the Tema Port expansion project has been officially handed over for business. Commercial operations will start on July 2, whilst awaiting President Akufuado's promise to review the contractual agreement for GPHA, which is a 30 percent stake shareholder in the new ports to also get additional stake in business of the new ports. The construction team is handing over to the transition and operational teams for work to start. The $1.5 billion port is expected to receive the first vessel to discharge its first cargo consignment. The new port will run 24 hours and 7 days, which is expected to last for 100 years and owned by MPS for 35 years. A situation that will help improve the turnaround time at the port and make it more competitive. Three berthing facilities capable of holding 2 million equivalent units of cargo is also ready. More modern intrusive examination of cargo and scanning of imports and exports are now available. We are ready and motivated to deliver as per all expectations to be able to serve Madagana and serve their community, their shipping lines and all our stakeholders. Aside that, 60 contractors and suppliers have been engaged with 1,900 new jobs would be created. It is expected that increased productivity, reduced freight costs and a boost to the country's GDP are some major economic benefits. We have given ourselves a good test with this vessel and more ready for the big day, which is the 28th of June. There will be another vessel coming very soon, I hope, and that one we will call it the go or no go vessel, and most likely it will be a go. However, all these had faced stiffer agitations from port workers for weeks until the president intervened. Maritime experts anticipate that government should review or remove clauses that gives NPS exclusivity rights to handle containerized cargo because the port is the single largest revenue generator for the country. 
Now, a consultant psychiatrist report after examining the first accused spetting in the murder of the Member of Parliament for Iwakwa North, J.B. Dankwaidu, has shown that he is mentally sound to stand trial. The psychiatric examination was ordered by the Accra High Court on April 14 after Daniel Asedu's lawyer, Augustine Obuo, had argued that his client was not mentally sound. The report, read by the presiding judge, Justice George Buidi, indicated that Dr. Hine conducted four psychiatric examinations on the first accused person. Following the outcome, the presiding judge ordered trial to commence. Daniel Asedu pleaded not guilty to three counts of conspiracy to commit robbery, robbery and murder, while a second accused, Vincent Bosu, pleaded not guilty to conspiracy to commit robbery. Now, to other stories, three editors of online news portal Modern Ghana are still missing after national security operators stormed their office Thursday following a story on National Security Minister Kandapa and MP for the ruling NPP, Athenio Marking. There has been a publication about the minister, which Modern Ghana says was an opinion piece, but subsequent to that, their office was raided. Reports suggest laptops belonging to the online media outfit were seized in the course of the raid and the whereabouts of his colleagues remain unknown. A close associate of one of the arrested reporters known as Emmanuel Bertum said all efforts to know where exactly they have taken them have proven futile. Meanwhile, a minister of state in charge of national security is said to have indicated that no operation has been sanctioned his outfit. Let's now go over the phone lines and speak with President of the Ghana Journalists Association, Roland Afilmoni. Thank you, sir, for joining us on Midday Live on TV3. It's a pleasure. Yes. So, sir, we know you have been interacting with the National Security Minister. What has he been telling you? Um, for our decision to speak to the authorities of national security is predicated on the principle that every story has two or more sides. So when we um, we heard it, an air cycling shock, the alleged um, in invasion of the premises of modern Ghana, we were hesitant to come up with details. We just start with our summary of the story. Also, um, this prompted us to speak to National Security Minister, and he did explain the circumstances under which the raids were uh, undertaken. The explanation um, is that uh, national security has been investigating modern Ghana for some time now over alleged uh, cyber crimes. Uh, he did indicate that uh, modern Ghana has been hacking into the emails and servers of its competitors, admitting the bank accounts of some media houses. Um, and they said they have evidence to back um, this assertion. Um, I've not been at a car since Sunday. I'm in commercial to speak. Um, so the price will be to examine in, in the more detail um, what um, the two sides of the story are. Mm. But the type of natural security is that the, the invasion is just a coincidence. And that uh, he also um, uh, made it clear that he is not nursing any presidential ambition. And he even laughed off that he and the power has been linked to um, ascending the president. Said not at all. Mm. And so that national security has been doing their work and their work led to the invasion of the premises of uh, uh, modern Ghana. We, we will continue to examine, as I said, uh, what is heard uh, before arriving at a conclusive um, um, stand on what has happened. So did, he, did, did, did he tell you the whereabouts of these three editors and even who sanctioned the, the attack, if he confirmed it? Uh, he he, he has to get back on that. He has to get back on that. And uh, he said he also briefed and this morning about the operation. And, uh, but he knew all along that uh, modern Ghana has been under investigation. So um, I placed another call to him, expecting to hear the um, response to the whereabouts of the three editors.
And as an association, what, what are you doing to ensure that we get back these three editors who are missing? Um, I think we have, we have, we have a constitutional, moral, and legally responsibility to uh, rally to the defense of our people. But at the same time, we will not condone uh, criminality in any form or shape. So as we will press um, and get the detail, incontrovertible uh, details, facts about what happened. And that will inform our, our decision, our stand on the whole matter. Mm. This brings us back to a promise that was made by the GJA last year that there was going to be a team of lawyers that are going to fight for journalists in such cases. What is the current state of that team and how are they going the, the to help is, with this the case? Fact is the lawyers have been working. Um, the deep lawyer is um, something I mean, in of uh, a historical team. If they are working, but they're working behind the scenes. They've been um, giving advice. Um, legal advice and behind the scenes and so we meet them and they tell us what to do on uh, every circumstance so um but we haven't gotten to them over this issue as i said i'm not in the capital to speak and michelle paris uh, i have an appointment with 224 so uh, as soon after that i will, will activate um other mechanisms to, to respond to what is happening mm. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Roland Afilmoni is president of the Ghana Journalists Association. Meanwhile, my colleague John Hughes is at the offices of Modern Ghana. I will be crossing over to him shortly to also update us on the current state of the office of Modern Ghana. You're still watching Midday Live on TV3. We're also live on DSTV Channel 279. Two other stories now. Some medical staff at the Confano Teaching Hospital are benefiting from a modern anesthetic training session to help provide improved services in orthopedic and plastic surgeries of the upper and lower limbs. The training by doctors from US-based Hospital for Special Surgeries, HSS, has also attracted doctors from the Kolebu Teaching Hospital and others from Zimbabwe, Nigeria, Egypt and Burkina Faso. What led to this whole collaboration between your hospital and Konfanochi? I first started coming to Konfanochi about 10 years ago and participated in some research projects where we studied orthopedic trauma as well as anesthesia care. And what we found was happening is there were a huge number of cases where the arms and legs were being injured. Uh, especially during road traffic crashes. How do you think that's helped Confanochi? Our program, which is called GRACE, GRACE stands for Global Regional Anesthesia Curricular Engagement. The GRACE program started a little over a year ago now and uh, it met with good results so far. Um, you are a beneficiary doctor. Before this whole training, how has it eased some of your workload? Um, prior to GRACE coming, I think um, blocks were being done, but the, the numbers were few and the types being done, not very many. Currently, we are able to do the blocks confidently. We've increased the number of blocks we do um, and the types of blocks that we do. And it's always very um, refreshing and um, exciting to see the impact on the patient. This intervention is to help us do these cases in low resourced areas. Hitherto, if a patient comes in with an upper limb um, injury, you are putting the whole patient to sleep. That means you need an anesthetic machine, the inhalational agent is very expensive. So if you find yourself in a district hospital, you have an ultrasound scan, you have your needle, you have your drugs, you are able to practice safe anesthesia. So you heard me speak with a number of doctors, some from the Hospital for Special Surgeries from the United States of America and our own Confanochi Teaching Hospital. Beaches Piagaba, TV3 News, Kumasi. And Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Balmia has called for mutual respect to promote interfaith coexistence in the country. He made the observation at a symposium organized by the Muslim World League in partnership with the Islamic Center for Education and Development in Accra. The symposium was to discuss religious minorities, their rights and obligations in the country. Deliberations focused on promoting dialogue between Muslim and Christian communities. 
the Vice President Dr. Muhammad Baumia called for mutual respect between Christians and Muslims. Religious acceptance and tolerance, the interfaith dialogue and co coexistence between Muslims and Christians in Ghana is jealously guarded. And where others have failed, we are committed to enrich the relationship and leverage it for our national, national development. The Metropolitan Archbishop of Cape Coast, Reverend Charles Pamabako, recommended dialogue and resolving conflicts. So Ghana is geographically in the center of the world. The zero longitude passes through Ghana, and the zero latitude is only five degrees below Ghana in the sea. So we owe it to the world to unite the two great big religions in the world. The Secretary General of the World Muslim League, Dr. Mohammed Alisa, praised Ghana for promoting religious tolerance. Media Live returns after this break. Don't go away. Welcome back in business this afternoon. Barclays Bank has marked World SME Day with a special clinic for businesses in northern Ghana. The event was to introduce participants to the bank's tailor-made capacity building programs in running a sound and sustainable business. World SME Day is a United Nations recognized day to raise public awareness about the contribution of small medium enterprises to sustainable development. The business banking director, Grace Enimiabwa, explained SMEs form a core of the bank's business. We recognize the fact that they constitute a significant portion of the nation's GDP, contributing well over 60 percent and actually employing over 80 percent of the nation's workforce. They form a critical middle of our economy and of our society. And because of that, at Barclays, we place a very high premium on serving SMEs with reliable, flexible, and feasible solutions. World SME Day is an important one to us because it's a day that we recognize and acknowledge the contribution that SMEs make to development of the nation, of the economy, and of the society. And as such, this year we have chosen to host it in Tamale and a great opportunity to actually emphasize our commitment to the sector. Marketing and Corporate Relations Director Nana Isilfua Boysen updated participants on the bank's transition to APSA and opportunities to the change present to customers and other stakeholders. Under APSA, you start seeing very exciting innovations, exciting products, services that we bring to you as a business. So there are many exciting things that is going to come our way. And being an African bank, we are going to own our own destiny. So we are able to do things the African way. Last year, the clinics supported more than 750 clients with various capacity building programs. Now, the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, says it is unable to restrain its members from taking any action to their interest. The group is disappointed that government's failure over the years to clamp down on the activities of illegal foreigners trading in the retail space has resulted in the members taking the laws into their own hands. The Ghana Union of Traders Association says although it regrets the recent attacks carried out by some of its members on some Nigerian traders at Swami Magazine in the Ashanti region, it blames the enforcers of Ghana's trade laws. According to the association, traders have for long insisted that foreigners operating illegally within the retail space be removed, but not much has been done. The National Welfare Officer for Guta, Benjamin Yeboa, said its members acted out of frustration. We stand by the two weeks. Booting them immediately is for the institutions to work. That's the painful aspect of this whole issue. If they started working all these years, close to two decades, we wouldn't be here and having this problem that we are faced with. And therefore, we expect that these institutions that are mandated by law to enforce the law so start working. The group has issued a two-week ultimatum by which time they expect the authorities to take the necessary action to protect Ghanaian retailers. Benjamin Yeboah, however, debanked the sessions that their actions are targeted on Nigerian nationals. It's unfortunate. They, like I said, there are so many of them on our markets. There are so many of them in our country. Name it from the northern region down to the southern region. They are everywhere. 
So it's, it's like any time there's this issue, they happen to be in the fall. Because there are so many of them. And that is why we tend to have that battle with them. But it's not targeted to, to them. The police yesterday invited two of its national executives over the attacks on Nigerians in Kumasi last week. Meanwhile, the Council of State has also waded into the matter to find a lasting solution to the Ampas. Now, in the energy sector, the Ghana Grid company, Gridco, has apologized for some power outages that were recorded in some parts of the country on June 27, 2018, in a press release signed by the PRO. Gridco says all the generators which tripped had been reconnected to the National Interconnected Transmission System next by this morning, and all bulk supply points have been restored. Gridco has assured the general public that it will continue to work with all stakeholders to provide adequate and reliable electricity supply to consumers. To other stories, the Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders wants a review of existing laws in acquiring permits to clear government goods at the port. They argue the slow pace of the process results in delays which attract more cost and huge charges. Cargo should be cleared within 60 days after a bill of entry has been filed by an importer or else it will be declared as uncleared cargo. Government consignment, which overstay, are not forfeited to the state and auctioned. Unlike others, it also attracts huge demurrage and rent fees. Permits for exemptions for imports are granted by the Ministry of Finance through the Ghana Revenue Authority Customs in collaboration with the relevant government ministry or agencies. There are no clear-cut procedures through which the uh, exemptions are taken, sometimes very, very cumbersome. If it, it has required a signature of a minister who is not available, all these things culminate into you going beyond the 60 days for vehicles and the 21 days for uh, other cargo. By this arrangement, we, we really need to look at yeah, the whole regime. Although they have exemptions, there's a process and sometimes the process is fraught with a lot of frustrations, you know, going backwards and forth. So even if you have an exemption, it's not automatic. You have to go through your parent ministry, then they'll have to go through Ministry of Finance. More often than not, by the time you get it, some days would have been accrued. And speakers at a forum on digital economy have cautioned government not to overtax startups which advertise their product on any digital platform. At a forum in Accra, they argued overtaxing startups could kill businesses and also affect the country's revenue mobilization drive. The forum organized by the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana, ICAG, was to discuss revenue mobilization in the emerging digital economy. Discussions also deliberated on numerous businesses which have sprung up on digital platforms and have escaped from the tax net. They again cited the lack of clear-cut legal regime to regulate businesses and activities on the various platforms. Despite these concerns, a tax expert, Abdullahi Ali Nachia, cautioned government against overtaxing startups on digital platforms. Then you have to make sure you are minimizing overtaxation. Find out if there are any forms of getting them to pay something, at least, to start with. But if you want to say, I've identified you, you have to pay PAY, pay directors, pay this, then they say, oh, is that so? Okay, I don't have directors. The Deputy Commissioner at the Large Taxpayers' Office of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Edward Jamra, urged policymakers to assist in reviewing the Double Taxation Treaty. You may be a non-resident person, do your business on the internet, have a warehouse where you do just supply of the goods from the warehouse, having employed Ghanaians to ensure that you do the delivery. As it stands now, the, the warehouse and the, the use of the warehouse by you would not be deemed to be a permanent establishment of the non-resident person. The theme for the forum was taxing the digital economy to promote socioeconomic growth. 
Time now for a break. We're back shortly. Now, so we told you earlier in the bulletin we'll be crossing over to the premises of Modern Ghana, where three editors of the online news portal are still missing after national security operatives stormed their office Thursday following a story on National Security Minister Kandapa and MP for the ruling NPP Afenyo Marking. There has been a publication about the minister, which Modern Ghana says was an opinion piece, but subsequent to that, their office was raided. Reports suggest laptops belonging to the online media outfit were seized in the course of the raid and the whereabouts of his colleagues remain unknown. My colleague Johnny Hughes is joining us from the offices of Modern Ghana. June 27, around 2 p.m., we got information that some two editors of the Modern Ghana website had been picked up by uh, suspected operatives of the national security. They were plain clothed, uh, but then later we realized that um, two other armed policemen had joined them to effect the arrest. The two gentlemen, Emmanuel Ajafo and Emmanuel Chum, were picked up. So we've come here to the premises of the Modern Ghana website to find out for ourselves what the full details are. Come with me, let's find out. And in here is the, the premises of the Modern Ghana website. The gentleman we spoke to who's one of the staff here uh, is a junior and so he's not allowing us to enter the office because he is not so sure what his superiors may think about uh, him allowing us to enter their premises but uh, what we know is that contrary to previous reports that three people were picked up only two persons were picked up. We have information also that the editor-in-chief has gone to the police to find out uh, where the, his colleagues are being kept at the moment. And we do not know the reason for which they are being kept. But earlier reports or preliminary investigations uh, said that they are being arrested for some publications made pointing uh, fingers at the Minister for National Security and also at uh, Honorable Afenyo Marking. We also are aware that there are some uh, initial reports that says that they've been involved in some uh, cyber crimes uh, or intercepting uh, information from strangers and correspondents of competing media houses and websites. It will be recalled that last Friday, the uh, director of cyber crime at the Ghana Police Service, uh, Chief Superintendent ACP, Dr. Gustav Yangsen, had mentioned that uh, we all need to fortify our uh, passwords to prevent people from getting in there. Interestingly, that story today has made it onto the website of Modern Ghana. And so questions are being asked about press freedom, but questions are being asked about uh, whether or not this is just a hoax or it is actually uh, what the true story is. And other media houses are also here to ascertain for themselves what the real situation is. For now, this is what we know. Uh, we do not know the whereabouts of the two gentlemen who were picked up yesterday. And we were told that the uh, plainclothes security men walked in, or supposed plain security men walked in here. Uh, they called out the editor, Mr. Ajafo, and uh, they had a conversation with him. So he was walking up to, to their vehicle, and then one of the ladies here actually told him that, well, you can't walk up to some somebody's car when you don't know who they are. And so while he was trying to return, then uh, clothed military per police persons, I beg your pardon, with arms, uh, got out of the vehicle and forced him in there. Subsequently, they came up, went through this door, and then picked up another Emmanuel Chum. So two Emmanuels, Emmanuel Ajafo and Emmanuel Chum were picked up. And then they followed up, got into their office, which is some, somewhere here. That's the last window. Uh, it leads to the office, and then they picked up their laptop. So we've seen the building as well. We've seen the uh, in, inner of the of the uh, editorial room, and they're just empty chairs and empty tables. There's nobody there, save one person. And earlier, we had also spoken to another staff of Modern Ghana who had told us on condition of anonymity because they seem to be scared uh, for themselves, not knowing exactly what their crimes are or uh, where their colleagues are being kept. Johnny Hughes, TV3 News, East Legon. 
And in the studio, my name is Grace Hamwa. So we earlier spoke with the president of the GJA who said that he has been interacting with the national security minister and he's confirmed the raid is as a result of a monitoring exercise by the national security operatives on modern Ghana news portal. So he has assured that the GJ will do all they can to ensure that these editors are found. That's how we wrap up today's edition of Midday Live on TV3 and it was also live on GSTV channel 279. Log on to 3news.com and get some other stories. My name is Grace Hamwa Asari. That's me.